عظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأصفياء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين والخيرين من أصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لكل جعلنا منكم شرعة ومنهاجا ولو شاء الله لجعلكم أمة واحدة ولكن ليبلوكم فيما آتاكم فاستبقوا الخيرات إلى الله مرجعكم جميعا فينبئكم بما كنتم فيه تختلفون صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد One of the most important subjects in the Islamic faith and Islamic thoughts and theology is the subject of pluralism. Pluralism of religions and doctrines and faiths. Oftentimes this subject of pluralism is neglected among the Muslims, especially in the East in Muslim societies back in the East. It has been bypassed. They don't speak about it. They don't mention it. Pluralism means that the divine will, according to many mufassireen, commentators, exegists, scholars of religion, it means that the divine will states that there should be multipli multiplicity, multiple religious communities, not just one. And Allah made it by design. He says in the Quran, وَلَوْ شَاءَ Allah," in different chapters, numerous chapters in the Quran, beginning with Surah Al-Baqarah and you move forward. In many places in the Quran, Allah says, it would have been easy for me to make all, all humanity one kind, one religious type, one community, one order, one sharia. It would have been easy for me. God can do anything. But I did not do that. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا I did, no, I did not make you one ummah in religion. Ummah in religion means I did not make you one religion, one special religious form or order. I did not do that on purpose. Why? Why humankind is not monolithic? Why it is, why we have multiple religions and religious orders? Why we have diversity? The reason is very simple. The reason is because Allah wants us to research. He does not want us to follow a religion by birth. Because you are born in this family, you open your eyes, your parents are Catholic or Hindu or Shia or Sunni 
or others and then automatically you join the club and subscribe to their tradition. He does not like to see that. He says, when it comes to religion, I want you to research. I want you to go and read. I want you to go and, and compare religions and then to find what is the best. I want you to work hard. Don't take religious lightly. See, my friends, when it comes to the simplest things in our life, shopping, today is a Black Friday. People go shopping, but they don't go shopping blindly. Even if you want to purchase a shoe, shoes, you don't go blindly. You go to selective places. You search for it. You don't, you don't just buy any pair of shoe and bring them home. Although you can return it. And you know how much it costs? 10 bucks, 20, 30, 40. It's not a big deal. But when it comes to religion, people follow religion blindly. People take religion for granted. People accept what their forefathers have. Inna wa jadna. This is the wording of the Quran. Allah says about the mushrikeen, the polytheists, they said to their prophets and messengers, don't talk to me, don't talk to me. We find our forefathers, our families, our elders following ummah means a tradition and we are automatically following them. I don't want to change my religion. Don't talk to me. This is bad. This is terrible. Allah says, I gave you brain. And the first reason, the first functioning of this brain is to discover God. The first benefit of aql and reason is to find the right religion. Not any religion, the right religion, the best religion. The good people are those who listen to different opinions and schools of thoughts. Ultimately, after that, then they choose what is the best. So Allah wants us to search and to read and to do our homework. And then after that, he wants us to be free in, in, in following religion. He does not want us to be coerced or intimidated, neither by a government, as it happens in many Muslim countries, that if you don't follow their path, you are a heretic, you are kafir, you are mushrik in many Muslim countries and you know to what countries I am referring to. Or sometimes it's not by the government, it's by the community around you, the society, the peer pressure, sometimes by your parents, sometimes by your friends. People get intimidated and then they have no choice. Now some people, they want to change their madhab, but because of the fear of backlash of his family, his uncles, his extended family, they don't do that. Or sometimes for the fear of losing their jobs. In some countries, not losing, only losing their jobs, losing their lives. Their lives. Allah says, this is not good. We want you to exercise freedom. Freedom of, cho of choice in choosing religion. And religion should not be imposed on us. Therefore, Allah says, I'll give you a choice. Allah deliberately made people into, into different religions and different names, different creeds, different ideologies. So you go and compare and you have a choice. You have a choice. Otherwise, if he creates one religion, where is the choice? Where is the choice? Imagine all Muslims were all, they had to be Muslims. Where is the choice then? And then why he's taking me to paradise? Because I have no other choice. One day we went to a restaurant and he brought us the menu. And after looking into the menu, he came half an hour later. He said, listen, we have only one type of food. I said, then why do you bring the menu? Why you wasted my time in this menu here? Allah says, I bring you the menu to have the right choice, but to incorporate your aql. Now, some people say, say it, this is bad. You have to invite people to Islam. When I invite them to use their aql, I'm inviting them for Islam. If people use their intelligence, their aql, their brain, 
definitely they're going to find Islam. Definitely. They are not going to go left or right. But because many times people do not use their brain. Even some Muslims, they don't use their brain. They are Muslims by birth, not Muslims by choice. This is why those who become Muslim by choice, I respect them more. Those who follow the tradition of Ahlul Bayt, Shia Islam by choice, I respect them more. I respect them more because they defy all the peer pressure on them, the pressure of the family, the environment, others, and they read and they say, this is the right. They compare and then they make this ultimate sacrifice in following the right path. And this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. Allah says, we give you guidance. For those who are searching, we will provide them with guidance. Inna alayna lal huda. Allah says, it's upon me, incumbent upon me to guide you if you are seeking guidance. But some people don't seek guidance. They don't want God's guidance, so he leaves them alone. But he says, Inna alayna lal huda. Inna hadaynahu sabila imma shakiran wa imma kafura. He will inspire us. If we start this journey of search, definitely is going to inspire us and he's going to help us. So the divine purpose of this plurality of religious forms, Allah says in the Quran in one word, why did we create different forms of religions? To test you. Walakin to try you, to test you, to test the test of obedience, whether we are following him or not. So we have different religions and different madahib. And Allah wants to see whether we follow the tradition of the family automatically or no. We are going to say, no, wait a minute. Let me see what, what others have. Let me read. Let me compare. Let me ask why and why and why. Many whys you have to ask. Many whys when it comes to religion. You should not take it at face value. You should do your research. Research sometimes through teachers, books, readings, asking, meditation, until you can reach the right answer. So Allah says, it's just like creating different races. Why he did not create one race? Some people say to God, God, you created different races, therefore we have racism. You should have solved this problem from the, from the beginning, either making people all white. So alhamdulillah, we all become racist, you know, white. Yeah. No problem, no other colors. Or make us all black. Why do you create a black and white and this and that? You're going to create racism. Allah says, no, this was not my intention. My intention when I created different multiple races and ethnicities is for you to cooperate and respect each other and find the good things in the others and learn it from them. To compete in goodness, not in evil. Not for discrimination, not for racism, but to learn from each other. Ya ayyuhal nas, remember this verse. Inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin. To work together, to respect each other, to learn from each other. Each civilization has something good that we have to learn from them. But this is not as happening. What is happening is exactly the opposite. One race look at himself as being other than other races, above other races. We are not handling it very well. It's like father. Some fathers who give money to their kids, they don't handle it well. Rather than spending it in something good, they go and misuse this money. This is exactly what people are doing with the issue of race today. The same thing with the issue of religion. Allah says, I created different religions. I did not want you to be only on one path. Ultimately, I want to come to me as one. But I want you to find that. I don't want to impose this on you. Takamul in this life, my friends, 
This life is a journey of takamul. Takamul is progression. Takamul is growth, religious growth. We are not growing physically, only physically. We are growing mentally and spiritually. The soul is also growing and trying to reach the level of perfection, takamul. This takamul is only found when you start reading about others, comparing your religion to other religions, and then choosing what is the best. This takamul. This is an exercise. Physical exercise is to run in the park for an hour. This is physical exercise. Spiritual exercise, when you compare your religion, what God has given you, when you compare this book, the Holy Quran, with others, and then you find, after that you're going to find that this is the best, but not before you compare it to others. If you just take it without comparing it, maybe you learn from it, but this is not takamul, you are not going to grow. Allah says, I want you to grow. Journey of takamul, at takamul al-insani. One last thing. Allah changed the Qibla of the Muslims. They used to pray for almost 17 months when they moved to Medina. They used to, to pray to the north, to Jerusalem, Bayt al Maqdis, for almost 17 months. One day Allah said to the Prophet, قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهَكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهَ after 17 months, Allah said to the Prophet, I want you now to change the direction from north to south, 180 degrees. Jerusalem being in the north, north of Medina, and Mecca being in the south, 180 degrees. Change your direction. Wherever go, wherever you travel on the earth, Wherever you go, فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطْرًا This is, this is the direction, the shortest distance. Huh? This direction is the shortest that takes you to the house of Allah in Mecca. Why? There was commotion among Muslims. Some said, why this is happening? We are used to this direction. Why today we have to pray this in this direction? You know, Allah said, why? For one reason. Listen to what the Quran says. Quran says, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا الْقِبْلَةَ الَّتِي كُنْتَ عَلَيْهَا إِلَّا لِنَعْلَمَ مَنْ يَتَّبِعُ الرَّسُولِ مِمَّنْ يَنْقَلِبُ عَلَى مِمَّنْ يَنْقَلِبُ عَلَى عَلَيْهِ We made the change of the Qibla just as a test of obedience to see who's going to obey and say yes to the Prophet and who's going to argue with the Prophet. Argue and turn against him. It's a test of obedience. Test of obedience, nothing more than that. Both are holy. Mecca is holy and Jerusalem is holy. And wherever you face, Allah is there. Does He live in, in this box called Kaaba? So we have to face the Kaaba? No, Allah is everywhere. Allah is everywhere. But then Allah says, this is a test of obedience. I want to see who's following the Prophet. The same thing with religion. Religion, Allah says, we created different religions, so you go, you study, and then you're going to find out about Islam. And once you find about Islam, you're going to embrace it and love it. And then you will be ready to defend this religion because you already done your homework. You know this is the right religion. And you embrace it with confidence. Some people are Muslims with hesitation. He is Muslim, but he doesn't know whether he's real, real, really Islam is the final religion, or we should be Christian, he should be Buddhist, he should be Baha'i, this or that. Allah says, this religion I don't like. This citizenship I don't like. I, I like a citizenship that you are ready to sacrifice. You say, yes, this is the right religion. The same thing we say about the madhab, my friends, follow me. The madhab, same like religion. You have to be confident of your madhab. If you are not confident, then there is a problem. You have to revisit your ideology, your thinking. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wal-Asr inna al-insana lafi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytah al-tayyibin al-tahirin.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته عليا أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سطي نبي الرحمة وسيدي شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم صدق الله العلي العظيم In the aftermath of the Paris attacks there have been an unprecedented amount of backlash and attacks and assaults on Muslims in North America. It took different forms and different shapes. Some of them are, you know, like the passenger airline profiling, kicking off some passengers because I don't like his face or he was reading something. Or it is bullying of some of the Muslim students in the schools. Sometimes it's threats as it is happening. Some militants in America who are carrying arms are sending emails and letters to many Islamic centers around the nation, threatening them with violence, with killing. Get out of this country. We will do this. We will do that. So a number of acts of bias and discrimination and an anti-Muslim rhetoric. And this spike is attributed mostly to the mainstreaming of Islamophobia, mainstreaming of anti-Muslim rhetoric by some unfortunately political candidates and some lawmakers who are in government, in the Congress and in other departments. And those are playing on public sphere. Definitely when something happens with this magnitude happens in Paris or elsewhere, those who are non-Muslims, they know nothing about Islam. And they know nothing about Muslims too. And they're going to develop a fear. If you have a neighbor who is a non-Muslim, even if you're there for the last 10 years, 20 years in the same neighborhood, that person is going to think because you know what you hear about those terrorists when they interview when a terrorist does something bad and they interview his mother you know what the mother says oh my son was an angel he was so good he was this he was this he was this he was that but all of a sudden he became shaitan and he kills 200 people so the Americans are going to say, yeah, all of them are good. They are nice, law-abiding, good, you know, friendly, smiling. All of a sudden, wahi comes on them. Huh? Revelation that you have to attack. You have to kill. You have to do that. So we are not immune, my friends. Today, let me tell you something. They perceive us as suspects in America. We are perceived, we are perceived by the vast majority of the American people, unfortunately by the vast majority, not all, vast majority, as suspects.
We can do anything to harm them, any minute. We can turn against them. So can we change this negative perception or no? We have to live with it for the rest of our lives. Our women who wear hijab, who observe hijab, they can live with this fear for the rest of their life. Our men, the same. Our children, the same. Those who go to school, those who go to work. What should we do about that? I think, yes, there is a room to change this negative percep perception. We have to change it. Allah says, Inna Allah la ma I am not going to change it for you until you take the initiative. You have to do something positive. It is about your life, your future. Show me your jihad here. Your jihad, I'm not, God saying, I'm not asking you to carry a gun and fight. Your jihad is your brain, your aql, your mouth, your tongue, your pen. I want you to use them to change all these negative perceptions and add your voice and be there. Be there, my friends. Be there. Be in the church, neighboring church. Go there. Even if you are not a church goer, go to the church. Go to the school. Go to the marketplace. Go to conferences. Go to workshops. Go to interfaith gatherings. Go here and go there. Be there. Be visible. Show yourself. Let them see you. Let them see that you are different and you, you mean it when you are different. We can only counter Islamophobia in America and the West through proactive, proactive initiatives and manners. Constructive and proactive manners. We have to engage. How do we combat hate? Through another type of hate? Does not work. How do we combat bigotry? Through another bigotry does not work. Through love, through educating them, telling them, yes, we have a problem in Islam. Yes, we do have a problem. As you do have it, you have it in all religions. In all religions, we have terrorists. We have people who twisted their ideologies upside down. And we have them in Islam. And I mentioned just last week here, almost every week I mentioned why we have ISIS. You, you almost mem memorize what I tell you. Why we have ISIS? Because we have some Muslims and non-Muslims promoting it, supporting it. It is for their own goodness, for their own political and economic benefit. We have ISIS. So, and this is not our problem. This is the problem of the entire humanity. We all have to put hands in hands and work together to elim eliminate Terrorism. Also, one of the things that we can do, my friends, is to support the advocacy groups. I know we are all busy. We are all running day and night. But there are some Muslim advocacy group who are doing the work on our beh behalf. But they need help. They need your help. They need your human resources. They need human power. They need financial assistance. So try to help them. And one last thing, my friends. This is what I witnessed and I experienced firsthand. A civic engagement. The more you get engaged with interfaith, with law enforcement, with others, with even elected officials, the more they're going to accept you and respect you. Now, maybe some of them, they don't. Whatever you do. But that's the small minority. The majority of them are going to accept you. So try to build friendships. Try to build relationships with others, partnerships with others. One of the good things that few members in our community did, just like last Sunday, two sisters from our community, they went to a mission via her mosque, a Shia Sunni mosque, Shia mosque, Sunni mosque, church and Jewish temple. They worked together to pack food for the homeless. 20,000 meals, I believe, you know, 20,000 meals. They work together, the men and women of a Shia masjid, Sunni masjid, church, and temple. Rather than fighting with each other, carrying swords and fighting, you know, and killing each other, they sat together and they were working. And these things, it works. It brings the hearts together, not the hearts of all people, but 
the majority of them. And this is what Allah wants us to do. Through this journey of partnership with others, working to serve the humanity, working together to serve the humanity. So I urge you, my friend, some of you, you don't participate in these things. You know why? Because you are too busy with your families. Dinner here, lunch there, breakfast there, today my uncle, tomorrow my aunt, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my cousin, busy with your families. Cut back on this, cut back on your family engagements and give part of it, not all of it, homes, 20% of it. 80% for your families, 20% for your Islam in this country. You don't have to respond to your mother-in-law every time she invites you. One time tell her, my mother-in-law, today I have to go to the church, unfortunately. I have to work there. Today I have to go to this temple. And I ask you, my friends, I ask the Shia Muslims to go to Sunni Masajid too. Because sometimes we have to do the work among ourselves, not just with others. And I ask the Sunnis to come to the Shia Masajid. We have to exchange these visitations so we can get to know each other better inshallah and remember always Allah does not do the work for us Allah says I help you when you start the work the majalis of Arba'een in English are going to start here on Wednesday Thursday and Friday December 2nd 3rd and 4th in English only on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, inshallah, by Sayyid Hadi Qazwini. And tomorrow we have the Arabic session for the Arba'een at 7 p.m. فَنَرْجُوا مِنَ الْإِخْوَ الْعَرَبِ أَنْ يُعَظِّمُوا شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ وَيُشَارِكُوا فِي مَجْلِسْ أَرْبَعِينَ الْإِمَامِ الْحُسَيْنِ غَدًا فِي السَّاعَةَ السَّابِعَةَ مَسَاءً إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهِ تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك ماح السيئات وجاعلها حسنات اللهم من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد